It is uh, uh, November 22nd, 2020. There you go. It's right down there. When I look at that uh, top of the dock to check the date, it's got me confused. Uh, 2020. I'm, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me scary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast with the Detroit Riddle Lakes, episode number uh, 578. I get confused. <laughs> hey, so when you get to the part of our document that says teaser, intro, and date with your name, if you look, that date is correct. That's the script. That's the part you're supposed to say. Yeah, but apparently this was supposed to be a, a, a streamed, released to, to Patreon and released to everybody else about a month ago. <laughs> it's called a recycled document. Calm down. Anyway, hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this week in, in the CUL entourage, somebody got a little hot and bothered. Uh, and I feel like teasing them. So that was fun. If you missed that, oh, I'm, maybe you should join the entourage chat. Fanning yourself. Whew. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> today, today we're, we're it's, it's that time again. Uh, we're going to find out what is. Uh, Gary, what are we finding out what is? We're going to have a little discussion about gratitude. Hmm. Interesting. What's your attitude? Um, so here's, here's the lay of the land where we are. It's November 22nd. We are a couple of weeks post the election day in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. um, we are still in a slight limbo land on what's going to happen politically. Uh, only because legally now it stands. We have a, a president elect and a vice president who will be a new administration coming in, but that has yet to be resolved apparently for some people. And the, the electors have not made their votes. Correct. Yet. So, and that'll be happening in a couple of weeks, but um, it is coming up on American Thanksgiving this week and COVID-19 is still raging. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the CDC has put out new guidelines on what we should be doing for Thanksgiving and uh, I think people are feeling a lot of ways about that mm -hmm. you know yeah. people people have been cooped up for months um, people have been trying to you know socially distance um, there's a newer thing uh, my director of health recently shared a tweet about called living room spread which is about families that congregate and get together and then they kind of spread it amongst themselves, not intentionally. Um, oh my. Because they might be asymptomatic because they're not realizing, like mm. the guidelines have always said, if they're not in your household, don't be around them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so birthday you know. parties and holiday parties, you know, when everyone's kind of nervous about Thanksgiving coming up. So instead I thought we might like kind of talk about the concept of, you know, part of the name, the way some people look at it, it's called Thanksgiving. As in, you give thanks for mm -hmm. fill in the blank. So it kind of got me thinking, and um, I have watched, actually more listened to a lot of YouTube uh, TED Talk stuff of late while I'm working, just so that there's something in the background. And there was a couple, actually there was one recently about... Um, just being in the moment and being thankful for things. So it kind of got me thinking about, you know, where I am today and what's happening with me and mm -hmm. you know, each of us as much as we know of. Um, and you don't know what other people are dealing with unless they share that. Um, and uh, of all the times that in which we share things now could be kind of difficult because um, you know, there's this thing called doom scrolling that people have been doing. Like they keep reading the news and scrolling through apps or whatever, you know, because they're 
um, they're kind of becoming addicted to the communal uh, negativity, I guess. Yeah. So um, it's really challenging, you know, to, and then you, you know, you, you hear about things or read about things. And I just, I just don't think things have the same impact anymore. Mm. But I also think that we're not doing very well with like being in the moment and recognizing what it takes for certain things to take place. True. Sure. Mm. So I, I think, especially yeah. I, I will speak for American society. I think we just take a lot of things for granted now. Like we, like, so for instance, in the pre-show, I was <laughs> complaining about how I ordered something on the day, you know, that orders were available, you know, of a new product release and that it would take a couple of weeks to show up. And now I'm expecting it to probably get bailed and ship when I won't be home. You know, first, first class, first world white people problems. Right. Um, so said it, not me. I'm trying, I'm trying to grow as a person and own shit. So, <laughs> You know, but uh, I mean, that's that's just an example of how, like, you know, taking things for granted, like not really thinking through about all of that kind of stuff. So that's that's kind of where I was coming from a little bit for this particular show going into it um, mm -hmm. with the holiday, because if you are going to gather with other people, whether they be your blood family, your chosen family, um, or you're going to stay to your household, uh, hopefully this year has a different meaning to it i guess mm -hmm. a different kind of act when it comes to that stuff yeah um hmm i was actually just thinking about this earlier um like this is my family's normal like get together um for several several years thanksgiving has been our holiday where at least on my mom's side of the family we got together. It started mostly because um, some of our, um, one of my mom's sisters had married a Jehovah Witness and they don't celebrate Christmas. So Thanksgiving kind of became like, let's all come to them all come together. And um, we would be thankful and give thanks for the fact that we could come together. Um, in recent years, it has become because of, you know, you know, growing out, you know, everyone's growing up, the kids are growing up and adults, we're all adults now and um, everyone's getting older. Um, it has become, it has still become the tradition and has become more significant as we have lost family members um, here and there. Um, the fact that we're, this isn't the first year that we've not celebrated it as a family. We've had a few years here and there where we've had to stop for one reason or another. But I think this year it feels different because it's not because of something we've done, if that makes sense. It, it's not a like, you know, someone has passed on or, or anything, anything like kind of detrimental along those lines. It's a, a health, you know, and safety concern that the general population should be concerned about that is kind of preventing it from happening. And I think it feels, um, I, the word that comes to mind is it, it feels bittersweet, if that makes sense. Like it feels like if we could get together, we would. Like all the things that would have happened would have happened, but because of this, <laughs> like all this going on, like we, we're, we're not gonna do it. and. Mm -hmm. Is is it? It I think it hurts just a little bit because of that. It doesn't have anything to do with us as a family. It has to just do with the world, and maybe that's the impact that it it's um, having on the psyche. Is that it's not your problem, quote unquote. It's it's you know the world, the United States. It's it's something that you can't control you have no real true control over yeah mm. <laughs> and but, i think it yeah i think i think what you're describing is perspective like yeah the context is everything at this time like what we're dealing with what we're facing i guess mm -hmm. um 
And, you know, I think the impact of COVID has really given some people, I'm not going to say everyone, I think it's given some people that, that exactly that, like the ability to take a look at their lives and the importance of certain things. I mean, some people have, you know, been forced into finding a new career path. Uh, mm -hmm. Some have taken it as an opportunity to make a change because yeah. of that, um, which <laughs> ties into Thanksgiving uh, in a sideways. So um, I was watching a, a previous live stream from a couple days ago about cooking. Well, more listening to it while I was working today. And one of the best things said in it was, if you're not doing your traditional family Thanksgiving, now's the time to change it up. Do something mm -hmm. different. Because... Guess what? Your Uncle Larry isn't going to be there and has to have that one dish. So do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> and I thought that was kind of cool and I fun mean, in a way. It's, it's too. true. I mean, I could see that being a big, like, a, one of the good, like, positive things. Like, no offense, if you are so fucking tired of your, your great, great aunts, like, awful, awful mashed potatoes, like, guess what? You don't need to have them this year and you don't need to pretend like you like them to make her feel better. Like you ain't got to do that. <laughs> you don't get to, you don't have to necessarily do that this year because see, you're not going to have that dinner where you have to shovel it in your mouth and be like, mm, so good. Mm, thank you so much. This is so great. Mm. You can eat the foods that you want. Mm hmm. Uh, and potentially create new traditions. Exactly. That's um, true. And and part of that, you know, coming back to the, the topic of the show is just, you know, I guess um, taking stock, you know, and, and recognizing and being grateful for, I guess, those that opportunity the, mm -hmm. to, um, I guess, sit and be okay with the change, yeah. with the difference, um, and recognizing that, you know, well, it, it is different it is unique it is mm -hmm. uh perhaps new um i'm trying to avoid a very specific word that has been overused in 2020 um <laughs> you know that you, you know it um it gives you the ability to you know truly um be thankful towards some things um yeah. and yeah. other people in that case so yeah this will be this will actually be the first year in a long while that since Jim and I have been together that we have celebrated, we're celebrating Thanksgiving together. Um, oh. Yeah, I mean, officially, like every, most years, if I'm not mistaken, I have gone home um, Thanksgiving weekend to spend it with my family and he has stayed here and he spends it with his family. Um, this year, because of, you know, COVID, we're going to be spending it together. Um, he's already planned a, a, a spread of, of something that is very fun and different and I'm looking forward to having that um, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to new taste and he asked me if there's anything specifically that I wanted and I said no not really because I'm kind of in that feeling with you Gary like let's try something different like I could have potentially asked to see about making macaroni and cheese that my mom makes because I love fucking love that shit. But one, I I know I can't do it. Families need to press uh, pass on their recipes. By the way, <laughs> I'm just saying, even if you don't have it written down, you just know how to make it. Mm -hmm, That's a recipe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just not as specific. You can still write it down. Yeah. And, and uh, maybe this year... I say some this families... about my grandpa's stuffing. <laughs> right. And, well, I mean, and I was going to say, maybe in some families, you know, you can... I've seen it in commercials where you share the making process via, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Zoom call or Skype. Yeah. Or... Yeah. And it could be something that could have been done. But I'm... I But I... <laughs> instead of doing that and, like, bringing in something familiar, I want to not and, like, enjoy what he is able to create you know and bring together um one of the things we've been doing we've been getting a lot we do the misfits if you've seen the basket um every week you get like a basket or a 
box of like random fruits and vegetables granted you order them in a sense but um and that's always been interesting because one we're getting you know more fruits and vegetables yay you know healthy living and food but two he's been especially like especially recently like coming up with ways to make new things and make things that are tasty and delicious and and um incorporating the vegetables that we get into that um so i'm kind of looking forward we we planned guys we planned this last box which should be here either monday or tuesday together so i'll know what's in it first of all and two he knows what's going to um he'll have an idea of what he wants to make for thanksgiving so i'm i'm very much looking forward to it He's talented in being able to be, okay, what ingredients do I have and what can I make with them instead of me who figures out what I want to make and gets the ingredients. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in regards to the gratitude topic, um, yeah, positive Oh, what is this definition? Okay. A feeling of appreciation felt by and or similar positive response shown by the recipient of kindness, gifts, help, favors, or other types of generosity towards the givers of such gifts. Uh -huh. Or tips for your Instacart drivers. <laughs> I mean, that's, you bring up, actually, surprisingly, you bring up a good point. Um, uh, Jeff, um, in this time, just because of everything that's been going on, you know, a lot of people have been focusing mostly on ordering things and, and getting things like Uber Eats or, or what have you, um, maybe going and getting um, carry out at a restaurant, um, support your local businesses, um, things along those lines. Um, there is a way to be appreciative and grateful for that. And, and one of those good ways is to up your tip a little bit. You, mm -hmm. you know, if you have been eating out, I hope you haven't, but if you have been, like, um, instead of giving, like, the normal, like, what you would normally give, maybe give a little more. Because these people essentially are working often, you know, sometimes they're working more hours. Some of them are, 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 are essentially putting their personal health at risk by just working in the, the, um, social, you know, public, you know, platforms that they're working in. Um, so it's a good way to be appreciative and thankful for them essentially doing all the things you're doing by just giving them a little extra. I know personally, I have been um, ordering a lot of Uber Eats because <laughs> it's it's easy and quick. And, you don't have to do uh, cooking. Yeah. I don't have I don't have and I don't have I I don't have to leave the house. Right. So, well, uh, and, and one of the things why I Instacart, um, basically buy my groceries online and have them delivered by uh, some uh, a wonderful wonderful driver, um, is because is part of actually my own health, which is basically, I am too anxious to go to the grocery store right now. Yeah. So they are helping me, uh, or the Instacart service, I should say, because it ends up being a different driver every time, but you know, so they're helping yeah. me by allowing me to avoid that anxiety. Of, I don't mind going to the grocery store. Before this whole, a shit store yeah. of this year going to the grocery store not that big of a deal i would even drive a little further to go to my favorite grocery store mm -hmm. it, because there's one right down the street from me but i don't like that one <laughs> so i go to that. a little one which is which is normally on my way home home from work which is great because you know i would basically do my grocery shopping on my way home from work and i would be able to go in and I'd wander around and i i i Oh, I forgot this. So I have to go from one end of the store where I'm at, at and go to the other end of the store. And I kind of like bounce back and forth. But then the last like time or two that I had gone to the grocery store before I ended up being able to work from home. But I, we, 
it's like you have to follow this path through the store. Mm. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't like super enforced or something, so it, it wasn't that much of a problem. This was also at the beginning of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you had to stand in this line, make sure you're six feet apart, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, oh, God. Um, and once mm -hmm. I got to work from home, I'm like, well, it's not like it's on the way home from work, you know, some <laughs> convenient place along my route. Uh, so it's, if I have to do this every single time I go grocery shopping and if they end up putting more restrictions on it, like as mm -hmm. I said, while, while they did allow me to kind of, you know, free reign of being able to bounce back and forth through the thing, through, through that, if I had to go through a line essentially to go through the grocery store and then i had to wait and stuff i'm like i don't want to do that and then then having the anxiety of like trying to make sure that i'm always six feet away from somebody that everybody mm -hmm, who i'm mm -hmm. six feet away from is wearing a mask i don't mind the mask honestly it just too much anxiety going to mm -hmm. if if it's just going to the supermercado or the uh, convenience store that's just right up the street here, I'm going to, I don't actually do like full, like long shopping times there. And they're not as busy as, as my grocery store can, can get to. It, it's not as much of a problem, but I just, just thinking about going to the grocery store, any grocery store nowadays, especially when they have like, limited times instead of you know being open to like 1 a.m or something um, mm -hmm. it it makes me anxious to to want to go th and it's just it means that i would just wouldn't have any food so having used instacart before this whole whole king blue um i kind of got used to it it there are some downsides like i want to make some they, and maybe this is something to do with other things that are happening in the pandemic. But, like, I want to make my taco soup, but they never seem to have on Instacart the chili beans that I need. And I can't find anything that would be a good equivalent to it. So it mm. gets a little, you know, and being able to be there to see to uh, and select exactly what I want, even though I would put in the app, it's like, I want this exact thing. Um, and trying to discern replacements and it, it, there's a lot of restrictions when it comes to using Instacart. So I have to think outside the box of what I want to do and everything, but I'm always thankful for those people who can take care of that for me, that can, uh -huh. can do that delivery for me. I am just thankful for the people at the supermercado and the, uh, uh, in the convenience store that's just right up the street for me. I thank them every time. My yeah. supermercado, I don't say thank you. I say gracias, which is basically the same thing. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, it, and it's just for all those people who are doing all these things for us, it, I always thank them, not just because I did it before anyways, but also, I, and, and probably I'm not really saying as much, but... I appreciate them so much. Yeah. <laughs> and, and no matter, like even the Instacart person uh, who comes by, they leave it at the door or maybe they'll, they'll do a quick knock, but then they'll instantly leave. So by the time I get to the door and open it, I, I can't even see them. I still say, thank you. Even, I don't <laughs> even know if they ever hear me, but it, especially if I don't see them, but usually it's yeah. like, I'm not wearing a shirt or I'm indecent. So I have to put some on before I go to the door. But in any case, by the time I get there, they're on. So I probably could just have stayed naked or something. Such a pain in the butt. <laughs> Clothing. Uh. The inconvenience. <sighs> I gotta put like an actual shirt on. Gah. Anyway. I mean, I'm wearing one now. I, I had to have to wear one when I'm streaming on Twitch. Which, by the way, I'm going to be streaming a bunch on Twitch this 
week because uh, Shadowlands is launching tomorrow. So I'm going to uh -huh. do some streaming on that. Obviously, some of those videos are probably going to come to the Cubs Out Loud YouTube. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Anyways, moving on. That's my <laughs> rant and rave about people during the pandemic who I think... Also, I would like to thank for the over 70 million people who have voted for Joe Biden, but that's another matter altogether. <laughs> 75, 76, what are we at now? I don't remember. Um, hmm. You know, it was funny because I was just thinking about that the other day. The last time I had was really like drilling down and paying attention um, on that. I remember thinking to myself, I'm sorry, I'm also looking online right now, um, at the numbers, and I was like, oh, it'll be really nice if it's over 5 million difference. Mm -hmm. And now... It's I, over 6. I was to say, I think it's crossed over 6 million. Yeah. That is hard. Yeah, so now the lead is, um, in terms of popular vote, 6.26 million. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yes. And enough of importance. Like, that that was where my mindset had, has been this whole time. It's mm -hmm. a difference of 3.9%, uh, 3.8%. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's there's that. Yeah. Oh, anywho. Sorry, so yeah, I, I think there's I think there's a lot, you know, um going on out there for us to kind of take stock in and yeah uh, to be grateful for. You know, I I um had a reflective moment recently myself in the past week. Um I was getting ready to go to bed and I'm not sure quite what happened in that moment, but I was thinking about like my life over the past handful of years. And um, uh, I was like, I think I, mu I, I must have been reflecting on where I was three years ago mm -hmm. or something. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you know, a handful of years ago, I was working from home with a full time job um, doing, you know, financially all right and uh, had no idea what was on the horizon mm -hmm. and was not ready for the. Um, unemployment and you know the kind of job reset and you know and 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 um and to now be in the job that i'm doing which i find much more rewarding mm -hmm. um so that's kind of yeah. like where i think my mindset was and so i had sent a message to some of uh my you know closest inner circle and was like thank you for like you know um not to not to directly quote a uh, theme song but you know thank you for being a friend um Aww. because like you hung around during the you know not so great time mm -hmm. um you know and and my depression and, and stuff so it was was one of those things that i was kind of taking stock of in the time and i think with the holidays coming up perhaps you know we're all being more reflective yeah. because we can't necessarily get together or should not uh, be, be yeah together. yeah out of concern agreed um i think one of my you know biggest things and it sounds weird is i'm i'm you know i am grateful to be working i'm grateful to have a job um while i was furloughed and that definitely sucked um for the most part it i don't want to say it was a blessing in disguise because no it wasn't um, but um, it was the the blessing was or the good thing was that at the end of it all, I still had a job. Um, I'm not I, right now. I don't have to worry about when my next paycheck is coming. I don't have to worry about. Um, any of those like potential stressors. Um, as I've mentioned, um, I think pre-show, like I've, I've, I have a cushion now thanks to everything that happened and not doing certain things because of, you know, the 
furlough and the pandemic has allowed for me to grow that cushion that I didn't know I would actually ever need. Um, just a tip reminder to everyone else, like you want a cushion. <laughs> if you could, if you can, if you can get a cushion, <laughs> make a cushion <laughs> like if you can save money fucking save money like it it is it is, it will make you feel a little less stressed about like if something happens worst case scenario kind of thing just putting it out there because <laughs> i know for me like holy shit um, um no i i i completely agree with you damon i don't i mean this is this is a realm we've really gotten into on the podcast before, but you know, um, my finances kind of went through a roller coaster thing in the past mm -hmm. couple of years. And now that I have a, a steady job and I actually work two jobs. And mm -hmm. like I said, in pre-show a little bit, like I'm even thinking about like after the beginning of the new year, when the overtime I'm doing now isn't possibly going to be coming around that I might pick up a, a little bit more with my part-time job so I could pay mm -hmm. off some stuff. Um, yeah. that's part of that whole, like, reflective, like, being grateful, mm -hmm. thankful, yeah. um, for the fact that, you know, I have, I have a little bit of money set aside, like, you know, that was the big, the one big thing that it taught me was, you know, I, we should, if you can, have yourself financially available that you have some savings to get you through a rough time, um, mm -hmm. And, and it's all over the place. Like, and this is coming from a person who never really quite had done it before. Um, the, the ultimate goal, the best thing ever, which is not something easily achievable or quickly, I should say, uh, is to have about a half a year's um, nest egg. So mm -hmm. you could pretty much, if you could cover six months of your basics, then you could pretty much survive quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, not everyone necessarily has that comfort or that ability. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you start small and you yeah. just, you know, can I cover my rent or my mm -hmm. mortgage? Can I, you know, and yeah. for, for just one month, like, and, and if you kind of get that going, then you kind of just do a little bit here and there. Like, here's something I saw recently, and I don't know if, I think it's an app with a bank. Well, I think it's a specific kind of bank account and it includes an app and it really intrigued me. Um, the whole thing they were marketing was that if you set up this account with them and you go with them, they round up everything to the dollar. And mm -hmm. everything that's the difference between the actual price paid and the doll and the and the dollar on the on the roundup goes into savings. Mm -hmm. So let's say like you go to stop at a convenience store and you buy something and it comes to, you know, nine fifty eight. Well then forty two cents gets rounded like taken to take it to ten dollars and that 42 cents goes into savings so mm. in your account it just automatically rounds everything to the next dollar mm. so every so ev so financially everything's just ends in zero so from a budgeting perspective it's like oh i spent i spent what i spent ten dollars like even if you spent nine dollars and three cents yeah you know um and then that way you're kind of quietly softly putting money aside into a savings account. And I thought, wow, that's a really interesting program. And I like the concept. I'm just not leaving my credit union for that. Yeah, like, I mean, true. Bang. So in my brain, uh, I was like, I wonder if that's something that you could create somehow. Like, and I, I don't know how it would work, but I was like, I kind of like that idea, like, you know, of an, of an automated kind of thing. I mean, it's like with my job, you know, with the pension comes out with the deductions before taxes. So I don't even see that portion. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and my, my employer's job matching. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of those things, but I agree with you to go back to your point, you know, financial security is emotional security. It's mm -hmm. psychological security. Um, it doesn't yeah. cover everything or fix everything. And I think that's kind of where people talk about like, you know, money can buy happiness. Mm, no, I think money buys, I think, can buy comfortability. Correct. Yeah, And I think being comfortable can go, can cut two ways. It can make you complacent as I was, mm -hmm. or it can uh -huh. also make you um, confident. So, you know, if something comes like you'll be okay. And mm -hmm. one of the things I think about is how, like, I hate to say it, but I 
kind of wonder if the bear community at large is more financially solvent now because the one thing we did not do this year is go anywhere we did not have events we did not travel we did not have plane tickets gas bill you know gas fuel car rental luggage um fees hotel Mm -hmm. rooms eating out like i mean yeah and that isn't to say that we couldn't offset that and spend it on toys or some shit. Like, that's totally <laughs> possible. Um, exactly. <laughs> uh, for those of you watching us, you saw David's hand gesture, you know what that meant. Um, you know, the, but the reality is, like, if you're not traveling as much as you're not going to events, then theoretically you're not spending literally hundreds of dollars mm-hmm. um, to to have camaraderie with other people. Is there a cost, though, to us, like, psychologically? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. um, I I mean, I see it every day on social media how people are, um, I don't want to say miserable, but they're unhappy about that they just, they've lost connections. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not even specific people, it's just, In you general, know. yeah, I and, agree. And, it's, and it comes in different forms. You know, some people are just like, I just miss hanging out with people. I miss, you know, uh, having people I can, you know, do things with, you know, whether it's just being social mm-hmm. or even to the extreme of like, you know, um, I, I damn grew my hymen back. It's been, so <laughs> um, you know, I mean, oh, you, <laughs> what? there's a reason I changed the audio clip. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying everyone else is like, thinking it and I just say it. <laughs> One more time, please. Uh, uh, Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. <laughs> so. I, I am definitely not thinking about that. <laughs> I just want to say that. Well, no, not I, something I, I think about at all. No, but that's Furthest true. thing from my mind. Are, some people are not thinking about that. Um, for everyone I think that's not thinking about it, quite possibly on the other end of the balance, there's someone going stir crazy. Mm-hmm. Like this pandemic has know. caused cab- cabin fe- fever to the utmost degree. I can just imagine once this pandemic is over uh, and everything is back to quote unquote normal. I'm not going to say actual normal because it's absolutely not going to turn turn to absolutely normal. But but. Do you know how many orgies there are going to be? <laughs> that I, that how much that, that needs to be a show in and of itself. Just an orgy? Like, Wait, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that. Well, so, okay. That, so, so, that'll make some people happy. <laughs> let me let me You're add that watch to on. the list. So we'll okay, do an LTAS on orgies because I don't think we have officially. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant was. We should do a, a post-pandemic show, and what I mean is, like, what will life be like after we get a last one COVID? Like, how it, it'll how be? It it'll be a two-parter that uh, that has probably quite a length between it uh, apart. One is our predictions, yes. and one is the the results show. This is kind of like the, the some tech news shows at the end of the year they do predictions on the on the tech news that's going to happen over the next year and then at the mm-hmm. end of the year then the they next talk. year they have their results show ah that could be a thing i in uh, the show it's called Port and gary <laughs> <laughs> i did not say we were going to host Let's an orgy <laughs> What I was inferring is that we will have a, a topic discussion about orgies. Yeah. I just know, um, like, I am, like, I will say, like, one of the things I'm, I'm missing, quote unquote, the most is just, like, being around other people, you know, in physical general. Presence. Yeah. Physical, like, actual, like, contact. Going to, um, like bear events and things like that is always good. It's that social kind of interaction that I, I crave and I'm missing. Um, but I also, I, I'm, I'm respecting and realizing the reason that it can't happen yet. 
I could have right now. Um, but man, um, this particular month is always weird for me because there was um, the local leather um, Tri-State had their contest, usually had their contest every this year around this time. Also around this time with the chorus, I'm usually going to retreat um, early in November um, around that time. So that's usually a big like social gathering for the chorus members and we go away and we're away for a weekend and it's it's always fun and and those are things i know in particular especially right now that i am missing and i'm looking through my memories as i go through facebook and i'm seeing all the posts about them happening and i'm just like oh my god it feels it it it, it it's that nostalgia i'm i'm wanting to do it but i know i can't and I think that's part of that's what is hitting the hardest. Um, but also, you know, I think most organizations and groups and, and bear runs and everything else is kind of understanding, like, you can't do it right now. Mm-hmm. So my hope is, for the most part, that these organizations and groups are are taking stock and working on when they can do it, maybe changing it up and adding a little something to make it um, a more cel- a more celebratory time. Because for the most part, most people are going to be wanting to do it and wanting to go and wanting to experience it because experience it, they haven't had an opportunity to do it for a year plus, mm-hmm. depending on how long ago it was. You know, um, um, and that's my hope, you know. I am thankful for organizi- organizers. Woo, that's a word. Um, <laughs> I'm thankful for organizers and planning committees and event, you know, coordinators that are that are doing, or should be doing these things, and will hopefully be making these plans and changes so that the events, when they can come about. Um, can be done will be be done with like you know a little extra oomph I want to call it oomph like an oomph like you know because we were talking about orgies Um, I just want to like see people (laughs) like I'd just be happy to like see other people like not just Mm. like, like you know video chatting pictures i want to like actually see the person in front of me and interact with them and touch them and and you know what have you yeah touch them yeah touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be fun anyway um yeah i and, and uh, unlike you i i'm one who uh uh, is loving this time in the, in the pandemic, not for the fact that the reason why this is happening, but mm-hmm. it allowed me to work from home. I'm so grateful for that. Mm. I've wanted to work from home. I don't want to go out. I just want to stay in one place. <laughs> I I prefer this. I'm really grateful for these minor little, these are the things that make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> I will and, admit I, I am happy that I've had that I again like I mentioned I'm happy to have a job I'm also happy that I can work from home and I'm able to do this um, job for the most part from the comfort of my you know office space that I have here um, that I, is nice yeah I, I, I'm <laughs> just it, it's just it, this is just showing the dichotomy here you you being more of a social butterfly and me being like the the epitome of homebodiness mm-hmm <laughs> that that you want to go out i don't want to go out <laughs> you're good staying in uh, be, you have been preparing for i don't have to go out odd years. yeah for, for 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 40 years yeah <laughs> for this <laughs> it's it's this weird dichotomy it's it's one of the things where it's like one thing that i would uh, what I'm really grateful for is when I go out and I see people wearing masks mm-hmm. and, and actually do it. Sadly, 
I walk out the door and I'm walking over to the convenience store, the supermercado, and and what do I see? Two, three, maybe four masks. Obviously, the the workers at the at the locations have masks, and and usually the actual people who go actually inside uh, have masks because they're required to uh, uh-huh. for their job. Um, and it, but I'm grateful for those people to hear because I think their people are people really nowadays need to be grateful that you're alive (laughs) and you are still living and hopefully no longer getting not getting COVID-19 once this pandemic's over that that the uh, vaccine gets widely spread and 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 people get vaccinated be be i'm grateful for pfizer and the other company that have have found vaccines which are very effective uh being like i think pfizer's first ones were like 90 percent effective although the storage was weird and then uh the, the other one which i can never remember the name for it is like 95 percent effective i'm so grateful for those scientists who have done this work on try on finding trying to find a vaccine for COVID nineteen, uh, especially so we can get to back to quote unquote normalcy, uh, and get back into a, a place where where we can go about not have to to put on a mask uh, in order to to go out and be uh, go shopping and and whatever activities that need to be done um i'm grateful for the people who listen to to all of that um i am grateful for this show because Mm -hmm. being a a relatively antisocial person this is my socialization well besides now with with my D &D and such but um and these, this is a socialization and socialization that I'm very comfortable with. Um, uh, I'm just grateful that we've been around for for you know ten plus years. Uh, well, I've been around for ten plus years doing this, but I've had you guys to to join me during that time. Um, I'm grateful for past and present co-hosts. I'm grateful for. Um, being able to have this equip- equipment to, d- to do this, even despite the fact that uh, some of the things that have happened through the years have caused us to change how we record the show. Uh, you know, th- I'm grateful for all of our listeners. I'm gr- grateful for the entire entourage. I'm grateful for the Bear Gamers uh, community. I'm grateful for um, my uh, family members, my um uh, pseudo family members that that live near near here who frequently have invited me over for for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, I am thankful for some of our former fa- our old family friends from where we lived when I was born, who I now got to be able to play D and D with. <laughs> <laughs> Big long connect weird connection. Uh, you know these are are just things that I'm grateful for and and uh, things that make me happy uh, mm-hmm. in life. Uh, the, the little things and the big things. And this is what I'm celebrating whenever Thanksgiving is around, is, <clears throat> is the, the good things of life. Again, I'm thankful for that a good 79 million people in the United States were smart enough to vote for Joe Biden. Yeah. Um goes again on eight eighty million, which is yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, and I mean we're we're this is about the same account, so he may break it. May not. Don't know. Trump will eventually give up, I'm assuming. Although I could be wrong because it's Trump. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but uh uh I am thankful that we got the uh invite for next week's podcast already. <laughs> really bitch wow you heard the ding right wow rude 
I love you, Gary. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, sure. Yes, I am multitasking while we're recording. I was like, let me, <laughs> also... let me, let me knock out a couple of things while I'm sitting here. <laughs> I'm also, it's, 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 it's like I'm going on my rant about everything that I am grateful, grateful or thankful for or grateful for. And, well, no, I mean, hmm. and that's kind of what I, I wanted us to have this discussion about, you know, in the podcast is, um, I, I do, I really think as Americans, we, we, unless you are of spiritual faith, where this is part of your practice, I think it's really kind of fallen by the wayside mm. that, that people take stock and be grateful for what they have. I think most organized uh, faiths have built into their practice that you are thankful to what you believe in mm -hmm. for the gifts that you have. Yeah. Um, and because I was a person not really raised in faith, I think of things from an outside perspective or a different perspective, I guess, mm -hmm. when it comes to that stuff. So that's really, you know, kind of where I was um, paying attention to. And I feel like um, this year specifically has really kind of torn at our um, collective soul in what we believe in, what we know, what we have mm -hmm. faith in, what we, uh, you know, take for granted. Yeah. Um, and therefore, you know, people have really kind of felt um, they were like, you know, when I went to the to the amusement park to go on the ride, I don't remember agreeing to getting thrown in to tumble dry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, True. like I'm good with the tilde whirl. That's fun. <laughs> True. But this this upheaval business is not my gig. Like, yeah. you know, and I, and, and so, you know, I, I think that's, um, as we're, you know, kind of coming to the end of the year and collectively, I think there's been this whole discussion <laughs> about, you know, 2020 will be a, 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 remembered for a great many things. And some of that has been turned into like comedy of, oh, well, we don't talk about that year. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, talk like her. yeah, we yeah. Talk about her. We don't. We don't know her. Twenty twenty. Like, what? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, who? who that, was, mm -hmm. that was the year that shall not be discussed, or whatever. <laughs> like, and at the same time, you know, what will future generations think looking back at this year? How things yeah. played out, mm -hmm. how it got handled, and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I I can kind of reiterate. Jeff's sentiments in regards to being thankful for like this, you know, podcast and, you know, like the entourage and um, everything else. Um, I get to talk and vent and rant and, and bitch and complain and show up and all that stuff. You know, late. it's kind of fun. Huh? Did you say nothing, late? Nothing, said late? Nothing. Who, nothing. Who said I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. <laughs> There uh, exactly. Yes. <laughs> if I had one of those, I'd be whipping that out now. Anyway. <laughs> um, I, I know what Christmas present get David and Gary are going to get me. They're going to order me a, a shade fan. I don't think it's on your gift registry. It, <laughs> that's true. I mean, it's not. <laughs> Anywho. I but I just thought of this. I just thought of this. Okay, somebody, somebody, give me a link. Somebody, give me a link. I'll add it. Uh, For those I, of you that I got don't a Chrome know extension? about that level of shade that was just delivered, so Jeff has posted on social media his gift registry website. Like, so anybody who wants to get him a gift, and understandably, actually, Jeff, I'm not knocking it. I yeah, think it's, yeah. I've been. I I had it, and I I had it as a tab, and I kept looking at it every few days, not to see what you were posting, but the idea just kept coming back to me, like how convenient it is. It's kind of like an Amazon wish list, but not everybody's on Amazon. So, like, I like the idea that you were like, and you put everything and anything up there. Um, not, I'm not gonna you know air your stuff, but it's like home goods that anybody could buy any day, but you're like, I need it. 
I could use it if you want to buy it. Right, like, like uh, right now, I I want some replacement <laughs> spatulas, but one of the yeah. ones that are like one solid thing that aren't like the two piece things that that you like slip off the rubber rubber end uh, from the mm -hmm. handle because there's there's gross stuff that gets in there. So if it's one solid cool. piece, nothing gets in there, and you can see easier to clean. Good to know. Just um, one of one of the many things. Yeah, my my list this year is actually awfully practical. Do keep in mind that I do have a, a MacBook Pro on there. <laughs> oh, oh, I saw. I was like, isn't this a nice, sensible list? And it's like most of us. You're like, eh, dollar store item, five dollar item, ten dollar item. 20 25 up to 50 you know so you could kind of like tell like this i'll get from friends this i'll get from family this i'll probably get from like my parents or you know i mean just like there's like kind of a strata of things mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you're like what the hell i'll just <laughs> throw something on there kind of out of reach sort of outlandish who knows what will happen you know I mean, it is something that I wish I'd like, for. I'd like a PS5 it is, or it is a whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've given up on consoles, so I wish. Yeah, I wish. Yeah, I wish. I mean, the, the <laughs> website is called MyRegistry.com, so it's listed as a registry. <laughs> and and to, to be fair, it, it is linking through stuff, so like it's syncing to my Amazon wish list and my Target wish list. I use the Target wish list because uh, my mom likes to get these stocking stuffers, and there's usually traditional stocking stuffers that they they would put in my stocking. Uh, so I I just go there being like, okay, just so you know, I would like this type of peanut butter. <laughs> right. Uh huh. No, no, and, trust. I, I don't have any issue with that because if there is anything that I find probably as a as a mild irritant that I am probably not grateful for <laughs> is when people do, aren't specific about things mm -hmm. and they're like oh I just need toilet paper and you're like do you have, do you have a brand no oh, just just whatever. Okay. And then you get the cheapest, cheapest toilet paper. Well, and then they're, they're like, well, that's and, where I'm then like, they're then they're no longer grateful because you well, like, no, well, have toilet like, paper sure. on there. No, no, no. I'm sure your booty hole has a preference. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, you're just not like willing to say that it's Charmin or Cottonelle or Scotts, you know, whatever. Like, you know, yeah. pick pick the pick your preference. But I mean, it's just it kind of cracks me up a little bit, you know, that some people are are indifferent, and I'm like. Mm, you could be a different on tomatoes. Like, you know, you I could see someone being like, well, you know, I, I don't kind of care. A tomato is a tomato is a tomato. That's fine. It's still mm -hmm. arguable, debatable, whatever. But there comes a certain point where I'm like, mm, I think you should be specific. So, so you, you got know? the, the H-E-B brand of, of diced tomatoes instead of the Hunt's brand diced tomato. Eh, you're probably fine. Right. Hmm. So anyways, um... <laughs> So that's what all that was about. As a diversion, my apologies to, to our audience. I was just making fun of the fact that I knew that Jeff just said about how he wanted to shade fan. I'm like, but it's not on your list. Um, <laughs> it, it can be. I just yes, it can be. Um, so as we kind of get to wrapping up here, I think I wanted to let folks know, like we do have a couple links. Um, one of them is to Wikipedia about gratitude, but another one is an article from a couple years ago. Um, if you're not an individual who, uh, I guess is, has been doing what I've been doing, I'll put it that way, where I, I'm always trying to grow and be a better person to learn from mm -hmm. what I've done. Um, so I watch Ted talks. I listen to podcasts about education and psychology and sociology, like, you know, and, and introspection and, you know, and all these kind of things. So I, I've spent decades of my life trying to just, you know, sort through things and figure stuff out. And I've learned over the years repeatedly, time and again, it's been referenced and there's been multiple studies that gratitude, being thankful for things, can have positive benefits in your life. Um, and specifically about like your your overall well-being um, on your psychology and emotions and stuff. So there's an article here about how gratitude um, changes you and your brain. And uh, there's just a couple of items on it about um, what you can do and uh, how it can be to the to the benefit of you. 
Mm. So something to, to kind of consider. Um, you know, I, I heard recently about how some people have gone back to, I, I say go back to, but how they have returned to writing letters mm -hmm. and sending cards, like mm -hmm. not emails, yeah. old, old, what, that what is now considered old fashioned snail mail, like mm -hmm. wrote a card, put a stamp on it, like that envelope, you know. <laughs> um, I, I appreciate the thought. I just don't want them because they're all they do is they go into the garbage after I read them. So they're kind of like a waste of paper. Eh. Oh, but but no. the, but the intention is there. The message is yeah, received. I appreciate it that. Probably, it probably grows your grinchy little heart a little size bigger, um, mm -hmm. and you can then mm -hmm. recycle the paper. You know, I'm like so I'm like oh that's sweet. I will. I will own. I'm just. I. I love getting like cards and stuff. Like it's it's something that I I, I personally really do appreciate. Um, that's the, that's why the, I'm the on usual this side of the screen and and Damon is on that side of the screen. <laughs> just so you know. Polar opposites. opposites. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but. The main reason is that it is a thought, like you were saying, Gary. It's the thought um, that kind of counts in a, in a way. Um, I would, I mean, I would be fine if I. I mean, it's gosh, how long ago was that shit? Like you remember, like like getting like e cards and sending e cards to people, like the ele even the electronic ones that you, they used to do back in the day. I, I think they probably still do. They them, still but do. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just. Uh, not so much anymore but like that's like that those like kind of weird things my usual issue though is that sometimes it becomes this could potentially become this back and forth like if you get a card you go thank you and then you send them a card to thank them and then they send a card but it's, but <laughs> but you know it's it's i i really do appreciate like that sentiment uh behind it usually if i'm giving a gift um a particular sentimental value uh, in relation to like, you know, like Gemini anniversaries and things like that. Um, I will usually get a card. And then we'll sometimes we'll sit the card up there, like on the mount on the mantle or whatever, and it'll sit there for a while. <laughs> and then eventually when we're gonna be doing something else, we have to take them down and we decide what to do with them. Jim um, recycles cards, um, uses them for things, so that's always good. Um, but I do really do appreciate like getting a card every now and then. A friend of mine actually sent me um, a Halloween card, uh, but it was part of her desire, especially now, to connect. You know, like mm -hmm. you were saying, like it's a way to like connect with other people during this time. Um, I have, oh, actually, I haven't yet. I probably should though. Um, I will probably add her to my um, our Christmas card list. I can send a Christmas card back to her, along with the other people that I send cards to. So, nice. yeah, you yeah. know, it it just occurred to me I haven't sent holiday cards in years, even though I have a bunch of like boxes of cards I bought a while ago. Yeah. Not a lot, but a couple. I just. Uh, I don't know. Like it just wasn't it crossing could, my mind or important. But now with the pandemic this year, I'm like maybe that'll maybe that'll be a thing. It's it. It can be time consuming, but it is. I will I will own especially like like Christmas. I will own like that's my big one. Like I will usually do it around then because it's just um, we're able to get a bunch of them. You send them out. It's you know labeling and addressing, and then essentially getting them to the post office to mail. Um, but it's nice. And um, the few that I've gotten responses to about like thank you for the card is very good. I always like to hear that. I think everyone, I think in general to kind of wrap it all up, everyone appreciates hearing thank you. Or I appreciate you. Or I'm grateful for you. Mm -hmm. I think everyone, most people want to hear, are, are appreciative, are grateful to hear that. So I think that is something that maybe we should probably start putting in our mental lexicons more often you know thank you but let's not be tatiana and keep saying it but, <laughs> but that's another story 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Providence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, I agree. I mean, I, I I think what we do is we 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 tend to think, well, it goes without saying mm -hmm. is is often quoted. Um, don't don't take it for granted. You know, yeah. make the statement. Say say to people, you know, that you're grateful for. Mm -hmm whatever that thing may be, um, you know, and in the years that I've been involved in this podcast, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, you know, share thoughts and, and have guests and grow and, and learn and, and do that stuff. Um, you know, I had kind of thought about doing a podcast um, and with all the work that we put into this, um, I've realized, you know, that like anything in life, what you put into it is what you get out of it. And everything doesn't have to be a grand mm -hmm. production, per se. Um, so, uh, you know, and there's and there's something to be grateful for in that as well um, when it comes to that. So, Agreed. thank you, Jeff, for putting together a podcast and a show, uh, you know, that has given lots of people opportunities to, you know, get connected with other folks they didn't even know about to thirst over people they didn't even know <laughs> um you know and uh you know to build some some good memories and stuff so mm -hmm. and damon thank you for being the impetus to kind of be like hey you want to you want to come on <laughs> and <laughs> do this thing I had the podcast. I got Damon on. Damon got Gary on. It's the circle of life. <laughs> I appreciate. I I am so grateful that Gary is one of the co-hosts here because he is very good at organizing topics and everything. Mm -hmm. I got the tech thing. He's the one that uh, point in the right direction. He's the one that uh, uh, kind of plans everything out, and I'm so. So grateful for that. Mm-hmm. I will I will jump on that. <laughs> I, <can't. laughs> I am grateful. I am grateful for Damon, who always has something to say, girl. True. It, not, none of this, none of this like two minutes of like not saying anything because of something no 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 mm -hmm. any silence is filled with with damon speaking and no i i'm grateful for that <laughs> yes yes that, that 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 was partial shade okay wait wait hold on there we go there, there we go <laughs> anyway yeah are you saying i'm talking i talk a lot bitch Actually, I know I talk a lot. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna. I'm it's, not gonna. It's, it's, so it, that's <laughs> that, that's not shade. That's tea. Oh, so that's true. Like tea. So because that is that this is, is pink tea. lemonade. But just imagine this is tea. Yeah. One, uh, I will. I talk a lot. And two, I hate silences. So <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so ta da. Um, I, I, I feel like I should be grateful that this is the end of the show. I think you can be grateful for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I know I, think, I am. I think we're grateful yeah. that we had yeah. had a great time of time of the show. Yeah. Um it, it, it's friends joining in a harmony <gasps> harmony, actually. Question mark. Um in, into uh, uh, creating a show that we hope that you are grateful for. Uh, there's plenty of ways to contact us to give us your gratitude. Uh, you can pop over to CubsOutLoud.com uh, Leave a comment on the blog. Show us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-265-8255 That's 361-COL-TALK You can uh, reach us on various social media Outlets such as Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place in the URL. Uh, you can uh, join our entourage and, and show us your gratitude there uh, at 
uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, you can find out when we're planning to record these things uh, once we got them planned. Uh, next week's is planned. Uh, that's at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Uh, you can be grateful by buying some merchandise from us. Uh, you can do that at zazzle.com slash comes out loud, zazzle.co.uk, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so where you can get things such as this uh, Consent is My Foreplay shirt. I got an tank top, but there's many different styles. Or, or the uh, Cubs Out Loud hat that Gary is wearing. I am pointing up to him on my screen, but he's really down there. <laughs> Here. Uh, you can also uh, subscribe to us. Become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, or if you just want to send us some money to, to show us your gratitude, you can do that at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can also uh, rate us and subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and uh, Amazon and Audible. That's kind of linked together. It's same system, just slightly different things. Uh -huh. uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box puppy box cub. Box up here or other, as well as Windgem, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch, where this week I will probably be streaming a bunch of WoW as the new expansion launches. So excited. Let me go ahead and add that hashtag. Any case, Damon. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me on most uh, bear related sites as Theater Cub 79. Um, you can also find me that that way on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gerber73. Uh, and with that, we would like to... Uh, where's my thing? <laughs> there, there it is. is. Uh, with that, uh, say good night, everybody! Good night, everybody! Ciao for now.